35,000 kilometers on the KM3s, 35,000 kilometers on the KO2s, pretty much the same conditions. And here are my findings. Before I kick this off, let's make this absolutely clear once again. As I mentioned in the KO2 versus KO test, the 35,000 kilometers that we did on the older version of the all-terrain tire versus the new KO2s, I am sponsored by BF Goodridge. BF Goodridge gives us tires to go out there, test and abuse. We have carte blanche to say what we think about these tires. So I am by no means being paid by them to give them a good review I just get given tires to basically abuse another thing to mention I'm not going to be comparing any of the BF Goodridge tires against any other tire manufacturer reason being I've never used any other tires I've always only used BF Goodridge and I always only will use BF Goodridge I suppose we would probably test a couple of other tires um, for that purpose but mm, my own vehicle, when I'm doing overlanding, BF Goodridge is where I'm going to go, right? So um, it's unfair for me to compare it to any other tyres, and therefore we're going to be comparing the all-terrain versus the mud terrain. Okay, so what we have here, I've got a brand new KM3 set over here off my spare wheel. 35,000 kilometres on the KM3 and 35,000 kilometres on the KO2. Okay, so let's set the scene these two tires have both done the same amount of mileage same conditions and they both the right rear tire off my vehicle and why do we use right rear because it's a left hand drive vehicle the right rear is always hanging off the side of the road so if you look at any dirt road it's never flat right so it's always rounded and your right hand side of the vehicle is always hanging down and that will cop all the flak right so any debris, any stones, the right rear tire gets it. Now, if you've got a right-hand drive vehicle, your left rear tire is going to cop the most damage. Or 90% of the time, that's the tire that's going to go because it's close when you're taking your corners and that's the one where it's going to pick up a rock or you're going to lose a tire. So that's why I'm comparing both tires from the same side of the vehicle. On top of that, both right rear tires, these tires have never been rotated. So I took them for 35,000 kilometers and I did not rotate them once to give us the worst possible outcome for these tires to be able to test them. Okay, firstly, let's talk about the KM3s. Mud terrain tires. Now, you would not be using mud terrain tires on your vehicle if you are not doing more than 50% off-road. Mud terrain tires are... Well, they're not built for highways. They're not built for going on tar road all the time. Mud terrain tires are not going to last anywhere long as long as your all-terrain tire. Okay? Mud terrain tires, as they start wearing down, become extremely noisy. Now, KM3s versus the older KM2s. The KM3, the new technology that they've put in here, it's a lot softer. The noise, the, the road noise is really minimal compared to the KM2, the predecessor of this tire. These BFG KM2s, these mud terrains are awesome. I, I can't wait for BFG to release the mud terrains in the Middle East. However, the road noise on your KM3 is, well, 
is going to be a lot more than a brand new set of KO2s on your all-terrain tire. So, typically, unless you're looking for pure for looks, for looks of the vehicle, and you want that chunky mud terrain tire look, you put on the mud terrains. Functionality-wise, if you're doing less than 50% of your driving off-road, hmm, mud terrain's not the way to go, guys. Simply not. You're gonna go with your all-terrain tire. And it's evident, if you look at it over here, look at the wear on the KM3, right? It's missing chunks, it's the wear, the tread wear is a lot more than your all-terrain tire. I reckon I could have got at least another 35,000 kilometers out of the KO2s. So it would have gone 70, maybe 80,000 kilometers. And these tires spent 80% of their time off-road. They've been abused. There are no chunks missing on the side. There's nothing. The tire's integrity is still there. It hasn't got that glossiness, so the tire hasn't gone hard the same way that the KO2 or the KO tire did. And in the review, I'll link it right now. You can go and look at that review if you haven't watched it yet. So we're comparing these two today. The tire wear on the KM3, if I got another 15,000 kilometers out of these tires, I would have been very, very, very lucky. Advantages of your mud terrain tire. The sidewall is a lot stronger than your all-terrain tire. So once again, rock crawling, any bush driving where you've got any sticks that are sticking out or any chopped over trees where you think you're gonna take your sidewall out, if you're in that kind of environment, mud terrain, all the way, okay? If you're going long dirt tracks, so I'm talking about Namibia, um, where it's thousands and thousands of kilometers on just pure dirt track, um, Australia, the same thing, where you've got thousands of kilometers that you're traveling on gravel roads. I think you're going to get better life out of an all-terrain tire versus your mud terrain tire. Desert driving. I'm going 100% with the mud terrains. 100% with the mud terrains. My vehicle has not performed so well off-road since I've gone to the KM3. I love the KO2s. I love them. If, if I was to leave right now and travel from Dubai to Cape Town, looping through Africa, I'm going to fit the KO2s. Definitely, 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 definitely. Because it's long gravel tracks. The amount of absolute extreme off-roading that I would be doing on a trip like that is minimal. Because I'm not going to put my vehicle through a lot of strain because I've got 25,000 kilometers to cover on a trip like that. So... Your amount of technical 4x4 would be 10% of that trip. And the KO2 is going to be able to manage that. If I were doing extreme off-roading and spending your time on very rocky tracks, on bush driving where you actually, you're actually pushing your own tracks, mud terrains, definitely the KM3. Sidewall stronger. Okay? Your grip in the, on these tires, insane. Now, the legacy or the, the, the myth is that mud terrain tires don't work well in the desert. Well, yes and no, right? So the mud terrain tire has got a much stronger sidewall. So if you're running a very light Jeep Wrangler, for example, you're going to have to deflate these tires probably down to 6 PSI before you start getting any kind of a bulge. Right, depending on how much weight you've got in your vehicle. So having a very strong sidewall in the desert is a disadvantage. But when you get these tires down, and I've got quite a heavy girl over here, so for me to get that bulge out of the tire, I'm, I'm only down to 18 PSI and I'm optimal. I'm getting my, the width, the, the, the length of the tire is, is stretched out and I'm getting so much traction. These tires are so soft. These knobbies are so soft and it just grips and it gives me that extra traction to get through the sand. And a lot of people are going to shoot me down. This is my opinion, guys. This is what I'm comparing the all-terrain versus the mud terrain over here. Okay? Mud terrain for the desert. Definitely. Highway driving. KO2. Definitely. Mud. Well, <laughs> obviously, mud terrain. Rock crawling. Mud terrain. Wadi driving. Mud terrain. Creating your own tracks off-road. 
mud terrain. I think you see a trend over here. Um, the mud terrain is obviously a better off-road tire. Yes, it is. It is it is exactly that. It is an off-road tire. An absolute off-road tire. 80% of your time should be off-road with these guys. These guys are, don't like the tar road. They don't like pavement princess kind of driving, right? This likes the abuse, and that's why they lose the lugs, because we put them through such abuse, and they are gripping, and they're doing exactly what they should be doing. It should be getting in there and absolutely tearing itself apart to get the vehicle to where it should be going, okay? All-terrain tire, you're going to keep the integrity, it's going to last you longer, and it will give you the capability to go off-road, but it's not going to give you the distance that you could travel up a rocky slope, for example. You're going to get a lot more traction out of this guy than you're going to get out of this guy. Now that I've compared both of them, and for the environment that we travel over here, through the Middle East, rocky, sandy, long dirt roads trying to get to our destination, what would I fit to my vehicle next? Well, <laughs> I went with the KM3s again. I absolutely love them. My truck performs so much better with these versus the KO2s. The point that I'm trying to make here is look at the environment that you're in. Choose a tire that's suitable for that environment. Okay, have a look at the amount of traveling you're doing off-road versus on-road. If you're using your vehicle for daily use to go to work and back, these guys are eventually going to drive you insane. As the tire goes down and as you've abused them off-road and it starts losing a couple of lugs and starts getting torn up because you abuse your tires and you don't deflate them well enough and blah, blah, blah. What we've done over here is they're eventually going to become so noisy and you're going to start getting a shake on your steering wheel. And that's for every mud terrain tire out there in the world go with an all-terrain tire have a look at the destination if you're planning a an overland trip okay so if i were to plan a trip from here go through iran up to azerbaijan catch the ferry going to kazakhstan and maybe work my way across to mongolia for example i'm definitely going to go with a mud terrain tire why well the first couple of thousand kilometers are going to be tar road but from then on once i get into kazakhstan and i get into mongolia this is what's going to assist me. So I'll plan a trip and then based on the trip and the terrain that I'm going to be covering is the tire that I'm going to be putting onto the vehicle. Okay. Everyday use, I think 99% of the people out there that are doing overland trips once a year or twice a year and using their vehicle for daily use or daily commute, the all-terrain tire guys, you know, um, in Europe guys have winter tires and they have summer tires. So the best thing would be, if budget permits, obviously, is to run your all-terrain tires for during those times that you're going to work and weekends you might be going away. And when you do that two-week trip on your vacation, stick on the muddies, go and enjoy your trip, get back, store them in the garage, and they're ready for next year's use instead of wearing them down because they do wear down a lot quicker than these guys do. In conclusion, I loved both of the tires. The tires have got their purpose. I love the fact that BF Goodridge has improved the tires from the predecessors. The KM2 to the KM3 is a massive jump. Massive, massive jump. The KOs to the KO2s, wow. Uh, I think that's the biggest, biggest improvement that BF Goodridge has ever done. These tires are really, really, really good compared to the KOs. And I like to see a tire manufacturer moving forward and using the technology that they're learning in the Baja, in, in, in the, des well, the Desert Challenge over here, um, the Dakar, using that technology and bring it to, bringing it to us as consumers. Because quite frankly, those guys put tires through insane abuse when doing the Dakar or the Desert Challenge over here locally. So that technology moving forward to us, I suppose it's like a Formula One company or a Formula One team moving that technology into the consumer vehicles and this is what bf goodridge is doing really well hope you guys enjoyed this if you haven't watched the ko versus the ko2 again look in the description the link is there hope i helped you guys out with the choice between your km3 and your ko2 remember if it's dusty drive it <laughs>